Hi, welcome. Welcome to the 4-minute video for developer series. This is Nasir, a customer engineer at Google, working on the Google Cloud Platform's Apigee product. In this video, I will show you the differences between a CODA policy and a spike arrest policy. I will also show you when to use a spike arrest policy as opposed to a CODA policy. As prerequisites to this video, you should already know the basic concepts of API proxy, CODA policies, spike arrest policies. Even though CODA policy and spike arrest policy at its core restricts the number of allowed transactions, these two policies are very different and used to address two entirely different set of use cases. To start with, for a CODA policy, the number of allowed transactions is derived based on a business level requirement. Like my Platinum subscribers can access 1,000 transactions per week. Or I have a very special end user, Joe, and he can access 5,000 transactions per month. Or I have a business partner, and any requests coming in from his host names can access uh, 1,000 transactions per day. If you look, these are all business requirements. On the other hand, number of allowed transactions for a spike arrest policy is based on a technical requirement, typically addressing security and availability aspects of the system. And these requirements could be like, uh, my backend cannot handle any load about 10,000 transactions per minute, or to prevent a third party harnessing my data. I want to block calls from the same origin if they exceed 100 transactions per minute. If you notice, the spike arrest policy spans over a very short interval of time, typically in minutes or seconds. Whereas the time interval for a CODA policy spans over days, weeks, or months. Right? Having said that, let's analyze few use cases and uh, based on these attributes we have learned, try to map these use cases to either CODA policy or a spike arrest policy. And here are the set of use cases. Let's start with the denial of service protection. We know it stems from a security requirement. We know denial of service attacks overwhelm the backend systems by invoking huge number of calls in short durations. From what we have learned, spike arrest policy seems to best address this use case. Subscriptions. It is surely a business requirement. Typical subscription spans over weeks, months, and years. Coda policy is the right tool to enforce limits defined by subscription. Traffic shaping. It is a security and availability requirement to smoothen the flow of traffic to the backend systems. A candidate for spike arrest. Usage restrictions. It's a business requirement um, an example could be free access to APIs restricted to you know, X transactions per day. It's uh, definitely a quota policy use case. Likewise, bot protection is a spike arrest policy use case. Metering would be a quota policy use case. Traffic management would be a spike arrest policy use case. Now that we know how to pick the right policy for a particular use case, let's see an example where you might need to use both these policies at the same time. For which I have two customers, a gold customer and a platinum customer. A gold customer can access, let's say, 1,000 transactions per month, and a platinum customer can access 2,000 transactions per month. I can easily implement this using a quota policy. But wait, what if the platinum customer intentionally or unintentionally invokes all of its 2,000 transactions at once. That will bring our backend systems down, and we don't want that. For that, we will use a spike arrest policy. And we can easily implement that using a spike arrest policy in front of our code policies. I hope this session was informative. If you have any questions, please log on to community.apg.com. Thank you so much.